Android 15 is here and I would call it as improvements rather than calling it as an upgrade. I'll dive into that in a bit and will share what's available now and what will be upcoming in future updates. But before that, I've got some high resolution nature wallpapers for you. You can zoom in all the way in and set it as your wallpapers. It also looks pretty good uh, when you set it as cinematic wallpapers in all the pixel phones you have. All you have to do to get these wallpapers is literally nothing. Yeah, but just go down in the description and download from the link. And I won't mind if you can subscribe to the channel for all the upcoming amazing and exciting videos on this channel. So let's get started. Let's start with the widget related updates. You'll notice there's a new section that shows you essential widgets, personalized suggestions and social media options. And these suggestions are dynamically changing every time you open the widget picker. Widgets are better organized and they look nice. Plus adding them is super simple now. You just tap the new add button instead of dragging and dropping it on the screen. Also, the weather widget is now called pixel weather. And there's also cool new home widget. This lets you control all your home devices right from your home screen, which a lot of people have been waiting for. It's finally here. I think it will prove to be the most useful widget for many of us who have multiple smart devices at home. Let's check out wallpaper and style and there are a couple of changes here. First one is the new color contrast feature. Now you can adjust the contrast of text, buttons and icons based on your need. We have these three options, default, medium and high. And next to this, you can also enable high contrast text by toggling this option. This feature was already there and is placed in the screen as part of this update. We have another change if you try to set the wallpaper. Now you see the preview screen is not covering the full screen. And once you tap on it, it will show the complete preview for both lock screen and home screen. And if you notice, the cinematic wallpaper icon is also moved at the bottom of the preview as earlier it was placed at the top right corner of the preview screen. Next, if you go to home settings and then to app list settings, you've got a new option to toggle and show long app names. So if your app has got long name, it will show the complete name and will adjust and scale the UI accordingly. We've got a couple of changes in the quick settings also. You can add a new tile for hearing devices for quick access and it will show you the pop up with pair device, live caption, live transcribe and sound notifications. Another change is in the Bluetooth tile. Now on toggling the Bluetooth off, you'll get another option to automatically turn on Bluetooth tomorrow. This is similar to iOS in iPhone and will be useful in scenarios as sometimes we miss to enable the Bluetooth again and the devices are disconnected. Most of the time it happens with me where my watch gets disconnected from the phone. Again, a small change in the brightness slider here as you can see a gray marker to flag the 50% level of the brightness. So next one, if you head over to the recent apps, you'll notice a couple of updates here. The most useful one is that you can now pair apps in split mode. When you have two apps open, you'll see an option called Save App Pair. This creates a paired icon on your home screen, letting you quickly access your frequently used app pairs. It really boosts your multitasking experience. Also, when you take a screenshot now, you'll see a smooth animation and the share and edit icons pop up right below the screenshot instead of being on top of it like before. Plus, these icons are now rounded and pill shaped, which adds a nice touch actually. So you'll see this new design consistently throughout the system. Like on copying any text, the clipboard and buttons have the same rounded look. Next up, the volume slider is now taller and provides haptic feedback when you adjust the volume. Similar to the brightness slider, you will also notice that live caption icon is missing from this area. If you go inside, you'll see the biggest design change of Android 15. The sound and media control screen has been completely revamped. It features thicker controls and rounded corners. The live caption button has been moved to the bottom of the screen and at the top, you've got the option to connect your devices. This pop-up also keeps that consistent design from the previous screen, which is a nice touch. Now let's talk about some of the app related changes. First up is the Instagram app. You can now take night sight photos directly within Instagram. When you are in low light, it automatically switches to night sight mode, giving you high quality shots. This is an amazing addition for Instagram users and influencers, making it super useful for capturing those nighttime moments for their reels and stories. Another change is in the camera app. In night sight mode, now there is an easier way to enable astrophotography mode. On selecting this, you can just move the slider to set to Astro 
it will then give you five seconds to put on a stable surface or a tripod. And the new animation after clicking the shot is much noticeable and is magical. I personally like this one. And if you come to the YouTube app, there's a new preview screen that pops up whenever you minimize the video you are watching. The animation is super smooth and it ends up with this handy preview. And also you can move this around anywhere on the screen. You'll see controls to close, play or pause the video right there. It's a subtle change, but it really enhances your overall video watching experience. Now let's dive into some of the new and existing animation improvements with Android 15. There's a new predictive back animation in settings that shows you a preview of previously visited page or setting. I've noticed the same animation in several other Google apps and it will be interesting to see if third party apps start adopting it as well. Overall, the UI animations and interactions are much smoother, making Android 15 feel snappier. The animations are fast and subtle, providing a seamless experience when navigating screens or opening and closing the apps. It's like there's a new engine under the hood of Pixel 7. I'll go into more detail about this in the performance update at the end. And now let's get into some serious mode and see some solid features and usability updates. First one is the private space. It is like a digital safe where you keep your sensitive apps secured, like your banking apps or photos or social media apps. It is very easy to set up. You just need to follow the instructions, sign into separate Gmail account and set your lock to get going. After that, you'll see your private space at the bottom of the app menu. You can use your fingerprints or password to unlock your space and will instantly show you the screen. There are some preloaded apps and if you want, you can install other apps based on your requirement. If you go to settings here, you can see these options. Plus, you can hide your private space if you want. And on enabling this, you can later access it by searching private space as by default, it won't be visible in your app menu. And if you're no longer using it, you can also delete your private space. So the next one is the theft protection feature in your security and privacy settings inside device unlock. This feature uses AI and your motion sensors to detect if someone took your device and ran away. It immediately locks your device to prevent access to your apps and personal information. You need to keep this setting enabled here. And there is another option for you to lock your devices remotely to keep your data safe. This, according to me, is a very useful feature and comes handy in some crowded or shady areas. You may lose your phone, but your data will be safe at least. Next, you will notice another security related add on when you connect your device to your computer with a USB cable. Now it asks for your password or biometrics before you can choose options like file transfer or using your phone as a webcam. Speaking of webcams, remember how Android 14 lets you use your phone for that? Well, in Android 15, there is a high quality mode that really brings out the best in your camera for video calls or whatever you need it for. And now let's check out some new changes in the settings. If you go to network and internet, then tap on internet, you'll find a new option under network preferences called allow WEP networks. When you enable this, your phone will search for the networks that use this older security protocol and show them for you to choose from. And next, if you head over to your apps, you'll notice a really handy option called archive in the app info. This lets you save storage on your phone by archiving apps instead of uninstalling them. The great thing is that you can easily restore them later and all your settings and data will be backed up. So when you bring the app back, you won't have to worry about logging in or resetting your personal preferences. Next up in the notification settings, there's a new continuity feature that lets you dismiss notifications across all your Pixel devices. So if you swipe away a notification on your phone, it automatically disappears on your tablet too. Now, if you go to the storage, you'll notice that the storage used by system apps is now organized into a new section called system. Here you can see how much space Android 15 and your temporary system files are using. Next one is in the sound and vibration. If you tap on vibration and haptics, you'll find a new feature called adaptive vibrations. This automatically adjusts your phone vibrations depending on your surroundings, like when it is in your pocket or in a noisy place. It actually uses your phone's microphone and other sensors to gauge the sound level and context, making sure you don't miss important notifications. Finally, you can check out Pixel Tips to explore all the new features added in this update. It is a great way to see the details and learn how to use them. One of the new tips highlighting Google's promotion for the Pixel series, showcasing offers for their latest phone, the Pixel 9 series. So like I mentioned, the Pixel 7 feels snappier than ever. 
After the update, I did notice some lag for a couple of hours, but once everything settled, the performance really picked up. Apps and animations are running smoothly, and I haven't experienced any overheating issues. It honestly feels like a new phone. And as for the battery, I haven't noticed any draining problems. Over the last five days of testing features and using the phone a lot, I've still managed to get about five to six hours of screen on time, which is pretty impressive for an older device. While I can't say the battery performance has drastically improved, the system performance is definitely better than Android 14. It is still managing to deliver solid screen on time and standby time. So I would say it's a win-win situation for the users. Let me know in the comments what are your favorite features of Android 15 and share your experience. For further updates, please subscribe to the channel and please like the video if it was helpful. See you in the next video.